Hi everyone, it's Spencer here with Spencer Stuff. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the next part of the Home Theater 101 series, how to hook your receiver directly to your speakers. I'm hoping that this video will allow you to be able to take that next step and make your life a little bit easier when starting out on your journey. But before we jump on in, I ask that you please hit that like button, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell notification icon so you're informed of every video that I upload in the future. Thank you so much. When it comes to installing your speakers, there are a few things that you absolutely must have. This includes 14 gauge speaker wire. I recommend 14 because I find it's perfect size for long runs. I also recommend wire cutters and scissors. That is at the most basic level. But if you need anything more, I recommend you get some banana plugs, some white duct tape, a Sharpie, and maybe even a tape measure. I recommend banana plugs for ease of use. This allows you to install your speaker wire to the back terminals of your speaker as well as your receiver without much of a problem. And I also recommend you get the duct tape because this will allow you to label your wires as you install them. This will make it easier for your future self in case you have to make any changes in your home theater. If you want to use a tape measure to measure out your area, you can, or you can run a pre-run with your speaker wire and run it around the room the way that you want to and cut it with the scissors. When prepping your speaker wire, I recommend you take your scissors, find the length that you need, and make a cut. As you take your wire, what you'll have is the strand here, and you'll notice that it's still connected. I recommend you take your scissors and cut a small slit. This will allow you to take your speaker wire and split it out like this. Makes it very easy to use. Now, you'll take your wire strippers, you'll connect to here, pull, and you'll freed up the speaker wire. Same thing on the black side. Now that you have that freed up, you can take your speaker wire, which has both ends free, and you can take your banana plugs that you may have bought. You'll take a black one, and you'll take a red one. To start off, I'll do the red. For this type of speaker wire and banana plug, you'll take this and unscrew it so it frees it up as such. You'll kind of twirl the speaker wire like this, so that the copper is a bit tighter and you'll feed it through like so. You can see it's fed through. And what you wanna do is fan out the wire around the banana plug base. And you'll take this top piece and you'll screw it back in as such. So it looks like that. You'll do the same thing with the black side. You'll take and twirl this feed the wire through as such so that it's fed through the black side. And once again, you'll fan everything out so that it is in the base and making contact with the whole wall. And then you'll screw back in the top of the banana plug. Once that is completed, you'll now have your banana plugs ready to plug in the receiver on one side. On the other side, you're gonna wanna do the exact same thing. You'll cut a slit and install your red and black banana plug. This will allow you to connect your banana plugs to the receiver as well as the speaker's binding posts. If you have a speaker with a single set of binding posts, this will make your life a little bit easier. All you'll do is if you have a banana plug set of wires, you'll take the wires that you already set up, you'll take the red side and you'll plug it into the red side. You'll take the black side and do the same. And once you've done this, you wanna take these twists and make sure they are nice and tight so they are not wiggling. This maintains solid contact with the speaker, allowing the audio to work correctly. If you decide not to use banana plugs and decide to go with the free wiring, you'll make sure that black matches with black and red still matches with red. The way you wanna set these up though, is you want to unscrew the binding posts so that they are fully loosened. And there are two holes on each side for the black and red terminals that will allow you to take the wire and feed them through. For the red wire, you'll wanna twist it up so it is nice and tight. You'll find those holes within the speaker and you'll feed it through. You might notice it here. Once you have fed it through, you'll take the terminal and you'll screw it back in so it is nice and tight. This will maintain a great contact between the speaker and speaker wire so that the audio can feed through. And you'll do the exact same thing with the black wire. You'll twist it up to make it easier to feed through the hole and then you'll feed it through as such. As you can see, it's fed through, screw it in so that it is nice and tight. And now you've connected your speaker wire to your speaker without banana plugs. 
So you may have noticed that the speaker you bought has multiple sets of binding posts. Do not worry, in our situation here, this is still gonna be a perfectly simple and easy to set up speaker. To start, we're going to cover banana plugs. When hooking banana plugs up to a dual terminal speaker, you wanna make sure that this little bridge here stays in contact with both sets of terminals to allow the whole speaker to work together. What you'll do is take the banana plugs that you prepped already, you'll plug the red side in with the red side, and you're gonna plug the black side in with the black side. And once again, you're going to screw in the terminal so it is completely tight so that the post stays in contact with both sets of terminals. And now you have connected your speaker via banana plugs. When using the bare wire to connect your speaker wire to your speaker itself, it is important to note that the process is largely the same as your single speaker counterpart. The only difference here is to make sure that the bridge here stays in contact with the posts. If it comes out like this, you're going to run into problems. You're going to unscrew the terminal, and on the bottom terminal, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's nice and tight, and that is on both sides for the black and the red. And for the speaker terminal that you decide to put your speaker wire into, once again, you're gonna take and you're gonna twist the speaker wire so that it'll be able to be fed through the hole with ease. You can see up through here. You're going to screw this back in. Make sure that the terminal stays in contact with the speaker terminals. Make sure it's nice and tight and do the same thing on the black side. Twist the speaker wire so it's easy to feed through. Unscrew this so that it is all completely loose and the hole is able to be used. And once you feed that speaker wire through the hole, screw this in, make sure it's nice and tight. Now that you have connected this, your speaker should work perfectly fine. I recommend that you just take a quick double check and check the terminals to make sure that the bridge is still connected. What you see in front of you is the Onkyo TXRZ50. While the back of the receiver does look pretty daunting, it really isn't that complicated once you start reading the labels. We're going to take this receiver and look at everything from the left to the right. And while every receiver is not necessarily the same, the concept exists on all products. As you move down the line, typically products lose features, so they should still have some stuff present that you see on this receiver. Starting on the lower left side of the receiver, you'll see the audio in section right here. This is your traditional stereo hookup, so that if you want to connect a CD player or other stereo product to your receiver, you can. In my case, I have a CD player, and I use a 3.5 millimeter to stereo connector to hook up my digital audio player. And on the far left side here, you'll see your phono preamp section, along with a ground, so that you can hook up your record player. You'll see on the far left side, you'll have your digital in section for your optical cables and your coaxial cable as well. And while optical is still good, it does not pass through all the audio formats. So if you have an older TV, that's the section you're probably gonna end up having to pass through. Included with this, you have an AM and FM tuner right here and your very old school style connector of the green, blue, and red connections, which in our case used to be red, yellow, and white. You can actually take these down here, the red and white, and connect them to one of the two yellows for your more traditional hookups. So if you have a very old gaming console, you can connect it to the receiver. You have an IR blaster in section, as well as a 12 volt trigger, which is for external amplifiers. And then you also have your HDMI inputs right here. They're technically HDMI outputs that'll allow you to connect your TV directly to your receiver via eARC so that you'll be able to pass through audio and video. Moving inward, you have your different HDMI ends right here, which all support 8K. For me, I have a Blu-ray disc player as well as a gaming console hooked up to this. And then you also have your ethernet and USB section here. These are what are very important as well. These are your speaker terminals. You might've noticed earlier that you have a red one and a black one. In your case, you're gonna connect your red to your red, your black to your black, as I mentioned earlier. They're all labeled so you can connect to your front, your center, your surround, your heights, and so on and so forth. This section will be more or less complex depending on what receiver you have. And at the bottom of this receiver, you'll see the pre-outs. Not every receiver contains these. Typically cheaper ones do not. This allows you to hook up external amplifiers to your AV receiver, to provide a bit more power to your speakers. And of course you have your AC inlet so that you can plug your receiver in and actually power it on. Now we're going to connect your receiver directly to your speaker. In my case, the RP400M is going to be your front right speaker. You might be asking yourself, what do you mean it's the front right? You're on the left side. You need to remember that we're looking at the back of the product, so everything is flipped. Now that I know this is the front right, you have an option. As I mentioned earlier, I recommend you take some duct tape and a Sharpie and you label your speaker wire. 
In my case, I labeled it front right, and I recommend you do this on both ends. This will allow you to track where your wire is going so that in the future, you'll be able to find it without a problem. Using the banana plug connection, I'm going to look over here and I know that I'm looking for the front right. The front section is right here and you'll see right and left. As I mentioned before, there's a red cable and a black cable on your banana plugs. The concept is the exact same as the speaker. You plug the red in with the red, you'll take the black and you'll plug it in with the black. And moving over and looking at the speaker itself, you'll do the exact same thing. Red to red and black to black. Once this is completed, you'll notice that the speaker is now connected directly to the receiver. When using bare wire, the concept is going to be the exact same as the other speakers. You're going to look at the terminal, you're going to find the front right section, and you're going to take your bare wire, red with red and black with black. On the receiver, you're going to unscrew this terminal, so you'll have a massive gap now. You're going to take the red wire and you're going to feed it in through here at the bottom. Notice it poke through at the top there. Then you'll screw it in so that it's nice and tight. These take a little bit longer than the speakers. And I don't prefer these just because of the organization, because if you have a bunch of these little nubs going out the side, it makes it a little bit more difficult to access them. And it's just kind of awkward. Same for the black, put it in, screw it, so it's nice and tight. You're gonna do this for all of the different speakers that you have, your front right, front left and center. And then moving over to the speaker itself, it's gonna be the exact same concept that we did before. You're going to unscrew the binding posts so that they're nice and loose. You're going to take red with red, black with black, and make it nice and tight. Feed the butt, the wire through the little hole at the top, screw it in, and do the exact same. The black. This is the other reason I don't like banana, or I like banana plugs a lot more. You end up a little less awkward on the speaker side of it too. I'm doing this real time to kind of show you the hassle you can kind of go through having to set all this up. So you are all connected now you'll notice the significant amount more time that it took to get this all set up. But at least you've got it situated now so that the speaker is directly connected to the receiver. If you bought a subwoofer to use with your speakers, the process of hooking up your receiver directly to your subwoofer is pretty simple. Being that a subwoofer does not need power in this case, all you have to do is hook up the line in section slash LFE section directly into the subwoofer out on the receiver. What you're going to need is an RCA cable in my case, I have a media bridge one, and I'll leave that down in the description below. Looking over and zooming in on the receiver, I'm gonna look for the subwoofer out pre-outs, which is right here, the little black holes. You're going to take the RCA cable like this, and you're just gonna plug it in to that hole. Moving on over now to the subwoofer itself, you're gonna notice a line in section on this Klipsch SPL100 right here. There's a right side and an L slash LFE side. You're gonna take your RCA cable and plug it into the L slash LFE section. This will feed the signal directly from your receiver to your subwoofer. Then moving on up, you'll notice that you have a couple of these dials here. You're going to wanna to set the phase to zero. I typically leave this on auto. For your low pass filter, set it to LFE. If you're in a situation where you aren't necessarily using receiver, but say a separate amplifier or something that doesn't have crossovers built in, you're gonna to wanna to set your low pass about 10 Hertz higher than what your speaker is. And for your gain, this is not volume, this is just loudness. So for my case, I had my loudness at about three or four notches. You do not wanna turn this all the way up as it can really hurt your subwoofer over time and decrease the longevity of it as it pushes the amp more, but you're gonna to have to play with it in your room. In order to hook up your receiver directly to your TV, you need to make sure to plug in an HDMI cable from the eARC port into the eARC port on your TV. While I'm not going to show the eARC port on my TV specifically, I'm gonna show you the HDMI out and eARC port on the RZ50 here. For my case, it's in the left corner here. You can see right here that there's the ARC or eARC section. And you're going to take your HDMI, which in this case, again, I have labeled HDMI in, and you're gonna plug it directly into the eARC port. This eARC port, is going to feed all the information from your TV to your receiver so you can pass through audio and video. 
An important note I need to make to you all is that HDMI 2.1 is the current standard. If you see a receiver with HDMI 2.0 or HDMI 1.4 or does not have an ARC or eARC port on it specifically, you're going to run into some issues with current model TVs. In your case, if you have an older TV that does not have eARC, you are likely going to have to hook your receiver up via optical cable. You will not be able to get all the audio formats, and if you are currently with a different HDMI spec, you're not going to get all the different features that you can get from HDMI 2.1. So make sure you do your due diligence beforehand and learn what you have. The final step in setting up your home theater is to make sure that all the speakers are working correctly. For my Onkyo RZ50, the remote has a little gear icon in the lower left corner that allows me to access this main menu. From the menu, you're going to want to go to speaker, and this is gonna be different on different manufacturers, but the idea is the same. What you're going to want to do is find the level calibration section. And while we're not calibrating speaker levels currently, we're working on seeing if all the speakers are running correctly. In my current setup, I have a 7.2.4 system or seven main speakers, two subwoofers, and four height speakers. So I'm gonna run through and show you what it should be like if all those speakers are working correctly. The level calibration screen will start loading. The front left is playing its own now and it's good. The center is good. Front right is playing and that is good. The height one left is good. Height one right is good. Height two left is good. Height two right is good. Surround right is good. Surround back right is good. Surround back left is good. Surround left is good. And my subwoofers are playing, which means that everything is set up the way it's supposed to be. I hope this video has instilled in you plenty of confidence to set up your first set of speakers and to know that even though it can be daunting, home theater is something that you should really truly enjoy. It is a memory making process and while it can be daunting at times, there are us out here who have done it for several years who are more than happy to help you out. I can't wait to continue this home theater series for you all so that you can continue on your home theater journey. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. As well as that, if you have any video suggestions or ideas, please leave those down in the bottom as well. I would be happy to talk with you all. I hope you all have a good day, good evening, whatever it might be in your area, and I thank you for watching this video. See you later.